So uh, this is about atoms, ions, and molecules. Okay, so before you can really understand um, how life is made, it makes sense that you need to understand uh, the components that life is made up of. Okay, and just like everything else in the universe, the uh, basic building block of not only all living things, but also all non-living things is the atom. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, what is an atom? Well, atoms are teeny tiny, unimaginably small things that everything in the universe is made up of. From uh, the largest galaxies and all the stars that make up the galaxy and the planets, all the way down to uh, a piece of Kleenex or the table or your phone. All of these things are made up of atoms. You can consider atoms like they are the smallest Lego piece that Lego makes. Okay, Just a little tiny Lego piece. That's like what the atom is. Okay, Now, just like Lego pieces, these atoms, there is a wide variety of colors and shapes. And you can put all these different colors and shapes of these tiny little Lego pieces together in different combinations to make different things. So some things are made up of a bunch of Lego pieces. Some things are only made up of a few. Some are made up of a thousand of one kind of Lego piece and maybe a hundred of this one and a hundred of that one. Okay, and you put them all together in these different combinations and you can make every single thing in the entire known universe out of these different Lego pieces. And there is currently, as we know now, there are 118, as of today, there are 118 different Lego pieces, different kinds of Lego pieces, that everything in the entire universe is made out of. Okay. Um, so what is each of those individual Lego pieces or atoms? What are those made up of? So the basic structure of an atom is a nucleus. Okay. Surrounded by electrons. Okay. Now that's it just these two parts, okay? We have the nu two big parts. We have the nucleus, and we have the electrons that surround the nucleus. Now the nucleus is actually made up of two different smaller parts, okay? And these are protons. I'm putting P plus because P stands for proton, and plus means that it's positive. These Things that make up the atom have electrical charges, okay? Just like the electricity that comes out of the wall. They have electrical charges. So the proton is positive, and that's one of the things that's in the nucleus. And the other thing that's in the nucleus, I'm gonna change this to see if you see, is a neutron. Now I'm gonna put N zero. Why N0? Well, N stands for neutron, and zero is the charge that it has. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's zero, okay? So the nucleus is actually made up of those two things, the proton and the neutron together. So some of these guys in here will be protons, and some of these guys in here will be neutrons, okay? Around here, around the outside, are these teeny tiny little things, that are called electrons. So I'm going to put a lowercase e minus because that's how electrons are abbreviated. Why the e minus? E stands for electron. The minus is the charge that it has. It's negative. So notice that all the protons with the positive charges are in the nucleus and all the electrons with the negative charges are around the nucleus. Okay. So remember, the nucleus equals protons 
and neutrons, and then around the nucleus are the electrons. Okay. And those are the three basic building blocks of an atom. But how do you put different atoms together to make different molecules? What makes atoms stick together? Or in other words, what makes these individual Lego pieces stick together and stay together to make these bigger, larger structures? Well, again, we have the nucleus and we have electrons that go around the outside of the nucleus, okay? Now, in reality, there are atoms everywhere in the universe, all over the place. Now, for reasons that we're not gonna get into in this video, atoms will share electrons with each other. Atoms need a certain number of electrons, and if they don't have as many as they need, or if they have too many, they will try to take some from other atoms or give some to other atoms so that they have the right number that they need. So let's say that this nucleus needs one more electron, or this atom needs one more electron, and this atom needs one more electron, okay? Well, what they can do is share electrons. So this atom can share this electron with this atom, and this atom can share this electron with this atom. So what ends up happening is that these two fields kind of overlap, okay? So now, once that happens, these atoms share their electrons with each other so that they can have the right number that each one needs. Once they do that, they create what we call a bond. Okay? Now, there are two major kind of bonds that we're going to talk about today. There are what we call ionic bonds and covalent bonds. So what's the difference between these two? Well, let's talk about it. So let's talk about ionic first. Let's say that this atom, for whatever reason, is overall a positively charged atom. And this atom is overall a negatively charged atom. First of all, why is this overall positive? Well, remember how I said before that the nucleus contains these positive protons and these negative electrons go around the nucleus. Well, let's say that this atom has one positive and let's actually say it has three positives, just, just for example, okay? I'm just making this up. It's not exact with my drawing that I'm going on here, okay? So let's just say that this atom has three positives. Well, then let's say that it only has two negative electrons plus three with minus two is overall a plus one, plus one, okay? So let's say that that's the case with this atom. It has three protons in the nucleus and only two electrons going around the outside. I know I drew three, that's why I said just don't make it exact to what I'm drawing here. We're just using it as an example. So these three pluses and two minuses overall equal plus one. Okay, plus three minus two is plus one. So that's the overall charge of this atom over here. And let's say that this atom over here has the same number of protons in the nucleus, 
three, but it has one, two, three, four electrons. Well, what is plus three minus four overall is minus one, okay? So we have an atom that has a positive charge because it has more protons than electrons. And then we have an atom that has a negative charge because it has more negative electrons than positive protons. And because this is positive and this is negative, just like two magnets, positive and negative, they stick together. So it's this magnetic attraction between the two that creates the ionic bond. Okay? So that's an ionic bond. For, and also, when an atom has a positive charge or a negative charge, it doesn't matter what the charge is, it's called an ion. Okay? Any atom with a charge, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, is an ion. Okay, so both of these are ions. This is a positive ion, this is a negative ion. Okay. So now let's talk about covalent bonds. So we talked about ionic. Now let's talk about covalent. So let's say we have another atom. Here's the nucleus. Here's the nucleus. These are two separate atoms. Now, once again, for reasons that we're not going to get into, These atoms have a certain number of electrons, but they want a certain number, and the, the amount of electrons that they have may not be the number that they need, okay? It's like if I have $10, but I need $15, okay? What I have and what I need don't always match up, so I need to go out and find me five more dollars. Just like, but instead of money, these atoms use electrons, like it's money, okay? They have a certain amount of money, they need a certain amount of money. If they don't have what they need, they gotta go out and get it. Where are they gonna get it? Other atoms, okay? So when these two atoms share two electrons, they're not positive or negative necessarily. They're not positive or negative. That's not, that's not why they're attracted to each other. Let's say that they're both neutral. They have zero charge. Well, they still need a certain amount of electrons so they share, so that they can each have the number that they need, and that bond is called a covalent bond. Okay? But here's the thing, regardless of what kind of bond it is, whether it's a covalent bond or an ionic bond, bonding between atoms is all about electrons, okay? So if you want to change the atom, you change the number of electrons it has, and then those atoms will recombine in different ways to make new molecules. Okay. Uh, and when you have a bond between two atoms, okay, this bond, this is where all of the energy is. So if you were to break this bond between these two atoms, energy comes out like an explosion. So the atomic bomb is an example of just how much energy is contained in these atoms. Now, when you imagine the atomic bomb explosion, that was not just one atom exploding. That was one atom exploding, which caused another to explode, which caused another to explode, and it all happened very fast, and it had this chain reaction, and that's what made the big, the big explosion, okay? But the point is, though, that you can see, though, that atoms have a lot of energy within them, and they're all here in this bond between the two atoms. That's where the energy is, and the explosion that you see is the release of this energy from the bond when that bond is broken. That's where the energy comes from. So all the energy that's needed to uh, power 
life functions all comes from the breaking of these bonds.